The Middle Ages was a relatively decent period to be alive in the history of Finland. Or so we concluded the previous episode. Now it's time to shatter that illusion and take a moment to talk about the key events of the Middle Ages. Those include war, wrath, death and slaughter. Let's go! The violent Late Iron Age saw the Finnic tribes in a constant battle against the Novgorodians and each other, as well as against the Norse and Swedish tribes. The warfare was typical for the Viking Age, quick raids against the enemy settlements, often looting and burning the entire place down, stealing any valuables and enslaving the survivors. Sweden was slowly forming herself into a kingdom, although that can be said to have taken centuries. From the 12th century onwards, they started increasingly colonizing the western coast of today's Finland. They would also slowly convert the Finns to Christianity, at least formally. Heathen shrines had to make way for the churches. The oldest known medieval church of Ravattula in Kaarina was built at the turn of the 12th and 13th centuries. That is shortly after the Pope Alexander III's letter from 1171 to the Archbishop of Uppsala complaining about the pagan Finns opposing the church. They would pretend to be good Christians when threatened with the sword, but immediately after they would harass the priests and make fun of their religion. In the same spirit, the town of Sigtuna in Sweden is said to have been looted in 1187 by Finnic pagans. Speaking of towns, the oldest town of Finland, Turku, meaning marketplace, is said to have been founded in 1229. It became the largest and most important city of the eastern part of the realm. The first bishop of Finland with reliable records supporting his existence was Thomas, reigning from around 1220 to 1245, during which the Swedish nobles fought for the throne. According to another papal letter, Thomas's reign saw increased cruelty by the heathens, likely the Karelians, Novgorodians and much of Tavastians. This resulted in economic sanctions and a ban on trade with them. This of course was no good news to Novgorod, and Prince Yaroslav II allegedly launched an attack into possibly Tavastia in 1227. This was then countered the following year by a Finnish force of 2000. They failed miserably. The Tavastians and Bishop Thomas were keeping busy. Pope Gregory IX's 1237 letter describes a rebellion of heathen Tavastians in southern Finland. The Pope spares no detail, writing that small children who have been shown the light of Christ through baptism they violently tear away from this light, slaying them. The adults, after pulling their intestines out, they sacrifice to evil spirits. Priests they make blind and brutally cut off their hands and other members. Papal letters again reveal a call to arms against the heathens bordering Norway. Apparently though, the church moved next not against the Tavastians but Novgorod. The eastern enemy of the Swedes and Finns was weakened by the Mongol invasion, and the Swedes took advantage of it. Or so it is thought, based on the Novgorod First Chronicle. It describes a naval force of Swedes, Norwegians, Finns and Tavastians being slaughtered on the river Neva by the Prince Alexander in 1240. The reliability of the account is questionable. The Tavastians didn't get to rest for very long. Jarl Birger of Sweden launched an invasion into Finland in the mid-1200s. The Erik Chronicle, written almost a hundred years later, calls it a crusade. Whether it actually took place or not, it is around this time that the Swedish colonization of today's southern Finland gets a boost. In 1250, Finland's first monastery was founded in Turku, followed by the cathedral school, the first of its kind in Finland, in 1276. The Swedish rule 
was of course not only strengthened with religious buildings, but with stone castles as well. Turku Castle led the way, its construction starting around 1280, perhaps simultaneously with the Turku Cathedral, which would become the base of the Catholic Church in Finland. Hamek Castle followed shortly after. It is worth noting that some Iron Age hill forts were still in active use or even constructed during the Middle Ages, but they became obsolete as Sweden's grip of the land grew stronger. Around this time, 1280, both the nobility and the church were made exempt from taxes. Wealthy peasants could rise to the tax-free nobility by supplying and maintaining a mounted man-at-arms. In 1293, the Marshal of Sweden, Torkel Knutsson, led the third Swedish crusade into Finland, according to the Erik Chronicle. This fun excursion was aimed at the Karelians, who had been a constant nuisance with their raiding and looting. The crusade was a success and was followed by the construction of Viborg Castle, now the easternmost outpost of Sweden. Despite the success, Knudson fell into disfavor with the king and was executed in 1306 in Stockholm. The clergy must have gotten jealous of the erection of castles and decided to build one for themselves. The now ruined bishop's castle in Kuusisto was a handsome seat for the bishop and an impressive fortress, just as Jesus would have liked it. The castle seemed to have little effect on the constant bloodshed with Novgorod. The Finnish bishop's chronicle mentions the Novgorodians burning down the city of Turku and looting its cathedral in 1318. The violence and destruction seemed to lose popularity among the rulers of Sweden and Novgorod. This led to them signing the now famous Peace Treaty of Nötebori in 1323, permanently ending all violence between the two realms. Just kidding. With peace formally on the paper, it was time for another kind of struggle for Sweden. In 1350, the Black Death arrived in the realm. This devastating epidemic killed up to half of Europe's population. Finland was, however, spared from its first wave. In 1364, the Swedish civil war was fought on Finnish soil too. Turku was besieged and finally surrendered to the king after suffering heavy damage. Finland was practically ruled by the immensely wealthy Marshal Bu Jonsson. During his reign, the Finns were granted representation at the king's moot in Sweden. For unlike most of Europe, the Swedish kings were elected at the time. In 1389, King Albert of Sweden was beaten by Queen Margaret of Denmark following a war that was part of a Scandinavian Game of Thrones. The Danish forces besieged Stockholm, but it was supplied by the Victual Brothers, the infamous pirates in the Baltic Sea that had business in Finland as well. Margaret took control over most of Sweden, leading to the formation of the Kalmar Union, lasting until 1523 and including Sweden, Norway and Denmark. In 1398, the victual pirate captain Sven Sture surrendered Korsholm Castle to the crown. The pirates were largely destroyed by the Hanseatic League, which ruled the trade of the Baltic Sea, and the leaders were executed and their heads displayed on spikes. The Kalmar Union was mainly governed by the Danish rulers. They were more interested in the matters of the southern Baltic Sea and competing against the Hanseatic League. This turned the Swedish faces sour, as their interests laid primarily in the Novgorodian issues. However, this series is about the history of the Finnic peoples in today's Finland, rather than Scandinavian Games of Thrones. Back to Finland then. Turku was buzzing in the 1400s. In 1409 they started minting their own coins, soon followed by the establishing of a legal court, and then it burned badly in 1429. The 1434 Engelbrecht peasant revolt against the King of Sweden spread into Finland as well, involving the siege of Kastelholm Castle. The capturing of castles is a recurring theme, 
as Razabori Castle was taken over by pirates in 1437, soon to be taken back, however. More peasant revolts took place, this time in southwestern Finland and Karelia. The same year, a Bridgetine Abbey was established, the first in Finland to accept women. In general, 1400s saw many new construction projects. Perhaps the most visible was the construction of St. Olaf's castle against the threat of Novgorod. It was Finland's most modern medieval castle and the first to feature roundel towers designed for the age of gunpowder. It would come in handy very shortly. In 1478 Novgorod was swallowed by Moscow and Moscow was not happy about the Finnish settlements spreading beyond their 1323 borders. A war was fought that resulted in no change to the borders, but caused a lot of destruction in Finland. It is no wonder that it would become known as the Old Wrath in Finnish. Robert Brandberry cites the Finnish peasants' writings of their suffering. They burned, beat, murdered and tormented our wives, our poor children and those men who fled. They took our wives and children and took them to Russia. The men they take and hang upside down by their feet, light a fire underneath them, scorching their hair and beard. After this they put them down, place a fiery container on their chest and burn the flesh from their bodies. They then tie a rope around their heads and twist a stick against their heads so tightly that it pops their eyes out. They then cut open their bellies and make them walk around trees as long as their intestines run. From some they tear off their beards and then behead them. Our poor wives they hang from their hands, beat with whips, cut off their nipples, stab with spears and torment to death. They take our poor children, impale them on fence poles while alive and then shoot them full of arrows. They carry all the children into a house, lock them in and burn them. Should someone make it out, they stab them with spears and throw back into the fire. Such accounts are anything but rare when it comes to Finland's history with Russia. We won't go into details again in the series, but it felt important to give a good idea at least once. The turn of the century saw the Kalmar Union starting to break for good. This manifested itself in wars which spread into Finland too. Turku and Porvo, for example, were burned. Well, this video has taken a really dark turn now, and that trend will be continued in the next episode. For Christian of Denmark's coronation in Stockholm took a turn so bloody that I can't wait to bring it to you. Do consider subscribing in order not to miss it. Also, if you like this stuff, consider becoming a member of the channel. With a small monthly payment, you will get my eternal gratitude plus 10 points and a parrot stamp. And as always, if Finnish mythology and history are close to your heart, see a cardiologist and then check out my other videos.